It is New Product Time. Let's get to these pretty fast, Lady Ada, so we okay. can get to more questions with Mike. Yes. All right, first up. Updated BeagleBone Black Proto Plate. Um, we had this for the regular BeagleBone, and now we have it for the BeagleBone Black. The awesome about it is um, now we have these little cutouts at the top and bottom, so you can flip the design either way, and also there's space for the micro HDMI connector. And I'll show it in the next step, in fact. So next up, we have this little micro HDMI to HDMI adapter for when you have something that has an HDMI connector and like you want to plug it in, like maybe your HDMI to VGA adapter or something. So I'll show this on the overhead. All right. Let's go. We'll get to the overhead in a second. Wait, we're getting there. Yeah. Let's just hang out. A little bit of a technical difficulty. A little technical difficulty. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> so uh, this is the new um, Big Old Bone uh, Puerto Plate. So you can see that the cutout is much bigger. So you can get to the micro, um, sorry, mini USB Ethernet connector. And on the other side, the new micro HDMI connector on the BeagleBone Black, and then, of course, the USB connector and then SD card if you want to use it. And then this is the adapter, and it has a HDMI socket on one side and micro HDMI. And so this you can actually um, plug in quite nicely, and the plate does not get in the way. And uh, this was lovely designed by Phil B. And so, yeah, you can flip this either way. So I have it this way, but if you want, you can reverse it 180 degrees, and the mounting holes all work just fine. So it's, yeah. It's perfect. Okay, next up, speakers. Speakers. Um, yeah, I mean, these are really nice speakers. We wanted to get USB-powered speakers, people doing, like, Pandora projects or Wave Shield projects. Um, they have a nice ported back. Um, they are powered by USB, but you can always, like, use a uh, USB to 2.1 millimeter adapter cable or uh, plug them into our uh, USB power, like, wall plug thingy. Um, they have stereo input and they have a volume adapter. We tried like half a dozen different speakers. Uh, these are really good. Yeah. Like they actually sound good. Yeah, we have um, a whole big box of, uh, you know, when you do designs and you have like kind of a box of shame. Not shame, but like things that didn't work out or samples you got. We yeah. have a, I have no idea what you're talking about. You know, you perfect the first That's time. never happened, yeah. yeah so. No, we have this whole big box of speakers, yeah. Um, so so this had, is Lady we, Ada. Yeah, so like I sat there and I was like listening to music and it looked like I was Chosen. just hanging out and listening to Pandora, but actually I was testing speakers for days. Yeah. All right, uh, next up, we got these LED panels. Yeah, this LED panel is pretty cool. Actually, can we go, um, we'll show this. Yeah. And it's a, it's one of, like a, it's a 32 by 32 LED panel and it comes with a Yo-Yo Mint, which is like um, this uh, Android development board. Yeah. And a up. Bluetooth adapter. Yeah, so maybe um, I can get you... To hold on, let me, I don't want this to unhook. So you have um, this is the panel, and it's just like the uh, LED panels we have in the store. In fact, I'm pretty sure it was prototyped originally on one of the panels we stock. And there's a Yo-Yo Mint, um, which is a, a like a Yo-Yo Android development board, and it has a Bluetooth adapter in it. And then this, there's a power plug that powers both of these because this uses like two amps of power. Thank you, please hold this. Yes. Thank you, my fine assistant. And then you can use a PC or Android um, because it uses Bluetooth and um, Apple doesn't want people to just use Bluetooth, so you, you can't use plain Bluetooth with this, but you can use any Android device. So here, for example, we have a tablet and I can select um, this design and it will change to a different pattern and you can program in your own animations. Um, it comes with a whole bunch of cool ones. Um, like, this is kind of a bubbly one. Uh, this one's my favorite. The fireplace one? Oh, that's Yeah, because nice. it's like this fireplace. Yeah, I think I might see that. Um, you know, there's like this sun, and there's like starry night or yeah. something, I don't know. And you're using, what, a Nexus 7 tablet? <laughs> yeah, this is a Nexus 7 with Bluetooth. It'll work with any yeah. Android device, Let's and the app the is there. free and easy to download, and there's instructions on how to do it, and it's called the Pixel Guts Kit. This was a Kickstarter. Um, and it looks really great. I mean, the color is beautiful. Um, you yeah. know, it's it's a, an awesome little kit, and you can put it in any kind of enclosure you like. Uh, it's really neat. It's really fast, and you can use it with a PC. It comes with a Bluetooth module. You can use it with a PC. Um, it's just you know, we thought that Android was kind of the most fun because you can use your phone. Hmm. There's a little lamp out of the way, so something might stress there. Oh. Uh, next up, we've got. Uh, okay, I'll put this way. Smart tweezers, right? That yeah. Is. These are some really neat tweezers. So actually, we use these in the shop um, a lot. And I was like, you know, I should probably sell these in the store because they're so handy. Uh, other people would probably like them. And um, actually, these photos, I can show them on the overhead, but these photos are really clear. So there's two metal tips 
that are the probes of the tw of the multimeter. It's, ba it's a basic multimeter. It does capacitance, resistance, diode, um, and continuity tests. And um, you can use it to measure resistors, capacitors, diodes. It'll also tell you the polarity of an LED because, like, it'll turn the LED on. It runs off a coin cell, has auto off, has auto ranging. Um, yeah. There's a scan mode even, so you can pick up a part you don't know what it is, and it'll tell you like. Uh, their, its best guess is like this is a capacitor and what the um, capacitance is. Um, so yeah, I can show in these photos it's measuring uh, uh, an LED and it lights it up. Um, and then oh, you know we don't do the photos, so maybe I'll show. Them, right. I'll show them the overhead so I can just show it really fast what it looks like. Yeah, on the overhead. Uh, yeah, sorry, I lost my part. So uh, these are the tweezers, and then you just press the function button, and it's like there and ready to go. And I'm going to put it in um, diode mode, and then that's the wrong polarity, so I turn it upside down. And oh, you might want to move it so you can see it. Yeah. yeah, hold on. It's hard. I have to grab this and show everybody. I might not be able to. No. Can you see it? Yeah, I can kind of see it. Okay. Well, it's it's lit up. This is why we have close high res photos, and we should keep moving along. Okay. Sorry. All right. Next up. Um, we also have um, uh, a multimeter that's like a pen type multimeter, and this is kind of handy if you want to like poke at something and. Um, look at the value really easily. I kind of like it because it's like easy to use and um, small. Um, and also, like I'm often poking at stuff, and like I don't want to have two probes. So it's just kind of like a it's like a lightweight way to have it in one hand, so you can like really quickly glance over. And it does um, voltage, current, um, resistance, and diode continuity. I don't believe it does capacitance. Um, it does have a really neat. Um, no, it doesn't do uh, capacitance. It, it does do voltage logic level, but it's 5 volt logic, which is kind of annoying. So, whatever. But it can do high voltage, although just be careful. It has a nice retractable tip, which I kind of like, so it's really safe. And it comes in a, in a really good bag. And then on the end comes the, the ground probe, which you can clip, or there's also a pointy probe style if you like. Okay, next up. This is my favorite product of the week. Bellow fat. So, you know, Adafruit's official color is black, and all of our packaging is moving to black. It's a... All my clothing is black, all the branding and iconography, all the things we do is black. So now we're just going to sell sheets of black. So no. <laughs> what is this, Lady Ada? So this is, Velostat is a, is a conductive um, plastic, and um, it sort of feels like, uh, it's. this is four mil, so it feels like a really heavy garbage bag, but it's not. It's um, Put this on the overhead. Yeah, it's this conductive black material, and what's really cool about it is it's pressure sensitive. So as the, um, the pressure increases, the resistance decreases, which means... It's, it's very inexpensive. It's only a couple dollars for a fairly large sheet like this. Um, it's very easy to cut. You can fold it, whatever, although that will change the resistance. Um, you can heat seal it, although that might, will change its properties slightly. Um, and uh, you can clip to it very easily. You can't solder it, of course. It's plastic. But you can use it to make um, basic sensors. Like, for example, um, we made a bend focus. sensor. Yeah, yeah it, actually, I need to go to the... Um, you want to get it there? Yeah, I'd really, uh, Sure. So this is a, um, a bend sensor that can change the annoying sound it makes based on how much it bends. And because it's um, inexpensive, you can make the bend sensor as large as you want. It's also really good for uh, pressure sensors, so you can put it inside of a shoe to tell when you're pressing on something. Or when you, you change it between fabric uh, with conductive fabric to tell when somebody's pressing on something, it's a lot less expensive than like a uh, off-the-shelf FSR because like the FSR yeah. is going to be a couple dollars, like for one little piece. You know, it's like seven to ten dollars. This is like three bucks, and you can cut as many as you want out of it, and you just clamp onto it with alligator clips. Okay, next up. Uh, this is uh, some conductive jersey. It's a nice soft jersey material. Um, it's a lot like what your t-shirts are made out of. Um, but it's conductive. It's conductive. 
And we have the conductivity measurements. It's made of cotton, silver, yarn, and spandex. Um, it's not shiny, even though it's made of silver. It's kind of it's kind of a matte look, which means it's a lot. You know, it's it's, it's a lot less like out there than like a lot of conductive fabrics, which are like copper colored or silver colored. And they're very shiny. Um, this is something that you can embed much easier. It's not as noticeable. Um, it's washable. Um, it's very comfortable against the skin, which we really like. So it's a lot better than the woven material for something that you want um, to, you know, be soft and touchable. And uh, we have it in 20 by 20 centimeter squares. Next up. You remember this? It was the stand. beginning of the show. Remember the beginning of the show? This. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this is a, a lovely little stand kit. Uh, it doesn't come with the LCD, but we show it with the LCD. And I can show it on the overhead pretty easily. Okay. Um, there's a uh, really nice black plastic bezel and then two side pieces. Um, when you use it with our USB um, or serial LCD, um, the connectors come out the side very nicely. And then the back is exposed so you can connect stuff to it. And then on the other side, it's closed off. Has some screws. It's very easy. It has um, standoffs to, to keep it all nice and solid. It sits on your desk. It, uh, we have tutorials for using it with Mac, Windows, or Raspberry Pi, Linux to um, have it display all sorts of stuff. Um, yeah, it's pretty straightforward to use. Is it compatible with the Arduino I2C RGB LCD shield? Uh, it's not meant for a shield. It's just meant for you know a small LCD like yeah. this. So it's basically designed for this particular backpack. Um, but you can also use it with LCDs that don't have a backpack and just have a lot of wires. All right. Last but not least, this is uh, one of my favorite new products that we have. Yeah, this is a um, capacitive standalone capacitive touch sensor with uh, five different inputs. Um, there's five wires. You can connect them to anything conductive, copper pads, conductive fabric, um, wires, whatever, to make a, a capacitive touch sensor. Um, there's LEDs for each output, and the output just goes low when the signal's touched, so it's really easy. There's no microcontroller required. You don't have to tune any capacitors. You just give it like two to five volts, and it's ready to go. Um, and do a demo? Yeah. The only thing to watch for is um, to uh, protect against. Um, I have to raise it closer to the camera. There you go. To, um, to protect it from having. Um, uh, like interference, uh, you can only have um, one output on at a time. So hopefully we'll see. Yeah, and as far as the concept, if you're familiar with the Mickey Makey, this is yeah. was, is that a helpful analogy? Um, well, this doesn't connect to USB, but it's just it's just the sensor part yeah. of the capacitive touch. You could connect this to something like anything else. Yeah. yeah. So this is just this is just a little capacitive glue to put between um, you know your project and capacitive touch sensor. So if you don't want it have like the annoyance of having capacitive touch code, you would just put this between um, your project and the touch pads and it would just like, it would just work as if it was a switch. So this is a little easier to use than, you know, a, a capacitive touch driver where you have S4C or SPI and you have to program it and read it and calibrate it. Yeah. This is kind of works out of the box. All right. That was a marathon race. Congratulations. New products are over. Whew.